Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Nut Producer Magazine, reporting to you here today with Mohamed Siddiqui, a, uh, a pistachio grower in the southern San Joaquin Valley. You know, one of the, the, the big issues in agriculture today is, is that we, we have a limited amount of resources and limited amount of land to grow things on with some high dollar commodities that are permanent crops that are going into the ground like uh, pistachios, almonds, you know, that we're, we're planting on some more marginal soils where we have uh, salinity issues mm -hmm. and, and Mohammed right here has dealt with pistachios on some of these soils and made things work, right? Yes. yes. And so I wanted to talk, obviously pistachios can handle a little more salinity mm -hmm. than some other crops, mm -hmm. but they still have their limits as well. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to get your experience on managing, uh, managing the salinity issues in the yes. orchard. Hi. Well, thank you for ha having me first. Um, this is Dr. Muhammad Siddiqui. Um, first, I want to introduce myself. I've done my PhD from UC Davis with uh, Professor Dr. Patrick Brown. Uh, and since 2013, I'm managing this, uh, I'm involved in the management of uh, over 8,000 acres of pistachios in Kings, Kern, and Tulare counties. They are really marginal soils. They are tough, but it's not impossible to grow uh, pistachios in those soil conditions as, um, as long as you understand your soil conditions uh, and how you manage uh, your, your dirt uh, in a way that you make it favorable for the pistachio production then it's possible. But of course, it's a costly process and it's a time-consuming process, but it's possible. If you, if you, if you, do, your, uh, if you do understand your soil conditions by taking the soil samples uh, gradually over the years, and you also do water sampling uh, to understand the, what the situation of your, your water is, which is very critical, right. uh, because what your soil is is because of your, uh, your, your soil is impacted by, uh, the by the water, so it's critical. And also, what the tree response is in all, uh, in, in what you are doing in, in terms of your water management, in terms of your soil amendment, what actually your tree is doing, that's critical. So we, for this, responding to, it. responding to it. So for this purpose, we, we highly recommend, and what we do is we collect this tissue samples as well, because that's the best indicator of your plant status in response to what you do in the field. So we do the water uh, analysis, water management, we do the soil management, and we do the uh, uh, tissue samples in order to prescribe and design a, a package that best suits the needs of that condition. And based on those, uh, we have identified different zones and we have split them in different management zones and we treat them accordingly so that we don't re uh, waste the resources. Like you said, uh, they are in marginal soil conditions. We have to be careful in terms of water management. Uh, we need to use our waters carefully. Uh, water is, uh, is a uh, precious resource and we, we need to make sure that we apply it when it's needed and how much is needed. Mm -hmm. So this is critically important and also um, the use of fertilizers are critically important that we need to uh, uh, wisely uh, use our fertigation programs because um, the yield is the primary determinant of your uh, fertilizer demand. So we should base everything, uh, our fertigation program based on the tree demand. And then of course we should take into consideration uh, the, as part of our uh, nutrient budget, especially for nitrogen, uh, considering you know the water pollution and, and environmental uh, uh, regulations that we, right. it's, it's coming mm -hmm. so for this purpose this nitrogen management is critical so what we do is we do the soil samples we consider the nitrogen uh, what, how much we are getting from the from the soil and how much we are getting from the water and then we design based on the how much we predict the yield based on the tree estimation Right. And then we design our fertigation program as well to satisfy our needs and we do not waste any resources. All right, so just getting right on par with exactly what you need and when you need it. Yes. Uh, are there some specific things uh, that, sh that you've done to offset those, uh, the salinity in the soil and in the water to, to, f to fix it? Obviously, it's a problem that happens over a long period of mm -hmm. time, so it's not a quick fix yes. with salinity. But what are some examples of some things that you've, yeah. or fertilizers you've utilized to uh -huh. offset that? 
Yes. So, yeah. So, w w the, the the biggest example that I can give you at this point, again, depends on the situation. Right. Every field is unique. Every year is unique. So, we need to. I would must say that one size doesn't fit all. So, right. we need we need to go according to the situation and the need of the local conditions. So, what do we do? Like, for example. I look at the water, if my water is, the pH is high and the bicarbonates are high, then I treat the water with sulfuric acid or with any acid-based material. Mm -hmm. The preference is for sulfuric acid because uh, we want to reduce the pH to dissolve the bicarbonate and reduce the, the, the sodium adsorption r uh, ratio level, which is not good for, the, if the same water goes to the, uh, to the soil. And right. if it is not treated, then it, it, your soil becomes worse. Right. the conditions for the tree growth. So we treat our water with gypsum, with uh, acid. So that's our water treatment. Then at the same time, we treat our soils. So depending upon what is needed, we either treat it with gypsum or uh, sulfur or combination of both and some uh, composting as well to make the soil more porous and, and, and workable for the trees to grow and for especially for the root system. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, any other recommendations you have for growers that are, uh, for example, considering planting, which we had record plantings, just back-to-back -back plantings these last couple of years, and if somebody's looking at the soil and thinking, hmm, should I, should I grow pistachios here? You're obviously showing that it, it's possible you can work with it, but, you know, is there, is there a threshold of like, no way, I'm not going to go there? I think in a situation that we are in, um, I can say that yes, I mean pistachios are very uh, hard, hardy plants uh, and what we see that it's more hardy than it's projected in, in, in the books because the situation that we are in, all the criteria for growing a pistachio in a conditions is, is, is above the threshold level. The ECs are high, the, the pH is high, the sodium adsorption ratio is high. But still, we are making progress. This is a plus sign. So what I would recommend to our growers is that, that you should uh, understand your conditions, your local conditions, and act accordingly. But it's a time-consuming and costly process. So you have to be willing to yes, make the sacrifice yes, yes. and do your homework. Yeah, we need to be consistent in what we are doing. Uh, um, it's a, it requires an integrated approach as a coordinated approach and a timely uh, responses to what is needed, and it's also a, uh, a long-term project, but it's doable if you do it in the right time and right way. Great. Well, thank you. We're definitely with, uh, with, with Sigma and all these other things coming down yes. the line, yeah. we're definitely going to have to make some tough calls and some tough decisions mm -hmm. with a lot of land that's going to, yeah. it, it sounds like it's going to be followed. Yes, exactly. Like we, we, we discussed, and we need to manage our water wisely based on the, the, on, on the situation is, so we can, uh, most likely we can utilize our water in an efficient way that we can reduce the water consumption, which satisfies the Sigma and our water needs in the future as well. There is a plenty of uh, opportunities that we can use those tools through which we can reduce the water consumption, unnecessary use of water. Yes. Right, and yeah. while still being able to grow uh, yeah. a, a, a commodity that's in high demand. We can do the same way, for, for example, for nitrogen. If you utilize your nitrogen based on what is needed, you can probably use half of the rate and you can get the same yield compared to putting more nitrogen and getting like uh, actually not getting more. Thank you very much. Read more about these things in Pacific Nut Producer Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.